<laughs> All right. Welcome to the energy of simple harmonic motion. We're going to solve a problem on the energy. And to show you that problem, let me pull that up. Uh, take a second and read this problem. You can pause it now. The cart that you see is bouncing around, doing, 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 doing back and forth, and it's going to have kinetic energy, potential energy, total energy. And the first question here is saying, what's the total energy of it at the 15 centimeter mark? So to show you how to solve that, let's go to the pad. And before you solve any kinetic energy or energy problem of simple harmonic motion, you want to know the angular velocity, which is omega. And that's in your data booklet as 2 pi f. So we fill in, if you look back at the problem, it has a frequency of 0 0.65 hertz, and that gives us an angular frequency of 4.1 radians per second, which is quite important. And then we'll use that in the actual problem, just saying what is the total energy. And the total energy, since it's a simple harmonic oscillator, is the same everywhere in its oscillations. And we just plug in 1 half m omega squared amplitude squared. This x with sub-zero is amplitude. And we then plug in our numbers. 1 half. 0.5 kilograms. That's the 500 grams. Angular velocity is the 4.1 radians per second squared. The amplitude is 0 0.30 meters squared. And you may be thinking, wait a minute, the problem said what's the total energy at 15 centimeters? Why are we using 30 centimeters? But that's a trick. Total energy is only dependent on the amplitude, not where it's at. So don't fall for that dirty trick. Use 30 centimeters. Then total energy works out. If you put this in on your calculator, that will spit out 0 0.38 joules. You're always in joules when you're solving an energy problem. Not about always, but close to always. So that's total energy. Next part of the problem is asking, what's the kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is another kind of weird looking equation of 1 half m omega squared. And then it gets more complex. You've got the amplitude squared minus the displacement squared. So it's really not too much harder. You just plug in what you know. 1 half times 0 0.5. Now I'm going to take out the units on this to save me some writing and you some listening. 4.1 radians per second squared. Your amplitude is 0 0.3 meters squared. Your displacement is 0 0.15 squared. You then plug all that stuff in your calculator, and you will end up with a kinetic energy of 0 0.28 joules as your kinetic energy. And then you can say, is this an answer that makes sense? If total energy is 0.38, kinetic energy has to be at best equal to that, but usually less. And in this case, it is less. So all right, good things are going on. The next thing you have to do in part three, it's asking, what is the potential energy? And what instead of using one of these 1 half m omega squared equations, you can instead use a simpler thing. The fact that total energy for an oscillator is going to be the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Rearrange this. Total energy minus kinetic energy equals potential. That's easy. Now you can just substitute. TE is 0.38. Plug that in. KE is 0.28. I'll plug that in. And then I've got 0 0.38 joules minus 0 0.28 joules equals my PE, and I get a PE of 0 0.10 joules. All 
Right. And that's your answer. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute. If that was at the 15 centimeter mark, which is the halfway point, shouldn't my potential energy be exactly equal to my kinetic energy? And no, you're wrong if you're thinking that. Because um, simple harmonic motion is simple, but not so simple that just at the halfway point of displacement, you have potential equaling kinetic. That does happen, but it's not at that halfway displacement point. Now, one other way to solve this problem, let's uh, clear this off, is you could have, if you wanted to, used another of those one-half equations for potential. Potential could have been found by doing one-half m omega squared times the displacement squared. You plug in your numbers, you still get that same 0 0.10 joules with you got with the other way, um, which was, or you get something very close to that. And that is an equally valid way of solving it. That works as well. It's good to know both methods. And that is it. Have a good day. Woo!